Pavlina from Pavlina's Kids Place, and we are here on location at the radio show, and I am here with the CEO of Clear Channel Communications, Bob Pittman. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Yeah, you're great. So you're about to have a panel. Are you excited for that? Oh, of course. I'm excited. <laughs> Definitely. So radio my generation, you know, we've really been into, like, social media and reality TVs. And how has it been, like, for our generation stuff? Well, look, I think radio is what it's always been for every generation, yeah. was it's the beacon of the tribe. Mm -hmm. uh, when you find a radio station you like, it's probably because all your friends like that radio station. And our job is to tell and look at TV shows, movies, apps, uh, concerts, and explain to the generation what's out there, tell them what's going on, tell them where people are going, tell them what's good, what's bad, and keep everybody in touch. In the old days, we just had a telephone to do it. Sure. Today, we have all the social media. So if you look at iHeartRadio or any one of our radio stations or the personalities, you'll see they're talking with the listeners constantly. So instead of a phone, we got much more robust means of keeping in touch, uh, even down to Instagram and uh, Snapchat and everything else. Yeah, Twitter all of that stuff that's great so a lot of people recently have been telling me that radio is dead so it's not dead right well there's no evidence it's dead <laughs> yeah how have like you've been trying to get like younger listeners into radio well it's you know it's I think radio is almost an uh, it's a it's a rite of passage yeah. when you get to a certain age and you lose the focus of your family and you mm -hmm. sort of go to the focus of your friends teenage yeah. years you start looking for how do I know what's going on and the radio station has been and still is that place that curates everything on a real-time basis and it ties all the other stuff together it ties together Facebook and uh, Instagram and Twitter and whatever you're using and it ties your concerts together fashion TV shows movies etc and it's one place to find it all and it's also where everybody else checks in exactly. so we always talk about we're the beacon of the tribe yeah. uh, so like we were rebels in uh, some country and we took over the country we'd take over the radio station first so <laughs> We can tell everybody what's going on. I like that. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. Well, good luck. I'm here with the president and CEO of the RAB, Erica Farber. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So nice yeah. to meet you. Yes, it's nice to meet you too. So we just okay, watched an I amazing want to panel. You, you. <laughs> now, you. is it true you're 15? I'm 16, but yeah. Si oh, 16. Oh my gosh. So you're a, 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 a very experienced. Uh, is this yeah. your first radio show? This is. I've never been here. Like I last year they had it in Orlando, and I'm from Orlando area, like in Florida. And I was like, really? I just missed it. Like. Well, so. we love that you're interested in radio. Yes. A lot of people find themselves in radio. Like, oh, I was a musician, and then I got into radio. So, like, how did you know you really get into radio? Well, I got in through the sales side yes. first, and. Um, when I got in, there were very few females selling. Mm -hmm. In fact, true story, um, I was working at an ad agency. I interviewed for a local sales job at a radio station. The sales manager literally patted me on the head and said, little one, why would we hire a girl? Oh and it gets worse because they said, well, we actually have one mm -hmm. and she's black, so we get two points for that. <laughs> and I was so flabbergasted yeah. that they said that to me. I um, asked for a media kit, and I walked out, and I called my boss yeah. and said, I may have an opportunity on a job. Mm -hmm. Can I have the afternoon off? I drove my car. I stopped it about two miles away. I got out of the car with my media kit, yeah. and I started going to retail stores. Mm -hmm. And the third store I got to was a women's shoe store. Okay. Yeah. And I walked in and asked to see the owner. And I said, Do you, would you be interested in having me shop here? Yeah. And he said, absolutely. Yeah. I said, well, do you advertise on the radio? And he said, no, we use newspaper. And I said, well, you know, I wouldn't know about your shoe store that way. Mm -hmm. And I said, I have information about a radio station. Now, I never told him I worked there. Yeah. And to make a long story short, about 15 minutes later, we sat down. I hand wrote him a radio commercial. And I said, well, you need a female to voice it because yeah. I can relate to your customers. <laughs> and I said, and I need cash in advance, so you're going to have to write me a check. He wrote a check to the radio station. I walked back into the radio station that afternoon and said, here's my first order. Here's the copy. I, I'm going to voice it because you don't have any women at the station. And they hired me that day. Wow. <laughs> that hashtag girl power. Nice. <laughs> with John, who is the president of this amazing advertising game, Bones. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Really appreciate you coming by our booth today. Thank you. Yes. So tell me all about Bones. Bones is a way for uh, radio stations to put uh, internet advertising, digital revenue, right in with their station. Their current salespeople 
don't have to go and learn how to deal with social media. They can uh, immediately pick up on this and sell it right along with airtime. It's a really fun like little game that you have to like find the bone and stuff. Tell me about that part. Yeah, it's a fun game. Um, Sparky goes off and finds game and everybody loves, uh, loves uh, Sparky. He finds the bones and as he's accumulating a stack of bones, Gnarly lusts after <laughs> those bones. And eventually Gnarly comes and takes them away if Sparky takes too much risk in the game. And I'm here with Paul who is the president of Next Radio. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, definitely. And you talked at a session, right? How'd that go? Uh, super session, yeah. It was well attended. Um, the topic was, I think the topic was like a hybrid radio, which no one knows what that means. And we quickly made it about Next Radio, which is really what we've launched here at the show. Tell me a lot more about Next Radio. For for the, the basic you know approach to it, it's, a, it's an app that lis listens to local radio that's not streaming. Yeah. It's an FM radio, FM tuner in the smartphone. Mm -hmm. And then we use the internet and the ways the internet works to make it look like an internet streaming application. Yeah. Definitely. And it's like an app that, you know, iPhones and Androids can download or what? It's an Android only uh, platform. We launched with Sprint about a year ago and they're the only carrier that has activated the FM tuner in the in the phone themselves. So it has to be Android uh, on Sprint or you can get any HTC phone from any other carrier. That'd be like the One, the M8, the Desire, the Remix, any of those phones will, you can download it from Google Play Store. Here with the Director of Business Development, Stan, how are you doing? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. So. What is Orange Soda? Tell me about it. Orange Soda is a online marketing company. Mm -hmm. So we've been in business since 2006 and we help people establish a website presence and a presence overall online. Yeah, that's great. How can like a radio uh, station or something contact you to get with you? Our website is orangesoda.com okay. and that's probably the best way and the easiest way to get in touch with us. It's very memorable and yeah. And we can reach out, we can talk partnerships and opportunities to sell our products, white label, to your customers. Yeah, orange soda. I was like, oh my gosh, it's so cute, you know? It's like a fun name. <music> we are here with a really cool, like, all-American rock band, Madison Rising. How are you guys doing? We're doing well, doing well. Awesome. We're doing good, thanks. Yeah. Pop for thanks. Good. You guys, you know, are a conservative, you know, vocal rock band. How did you guys start and really find that niche? Uh, well, we started about three years ago. Um, you know, there was definitely a, a sort of a void, I guess you could say, with rock bands that are around today that speak yeah. about the things that we speak about. Obviously, patriotism, um, giving gratitude to the troops, mm -hmm. and trying to give uplifting rock music that helps people feel patriotic and feel more like they feel when they feel American, you know, yeah. that feeling of being American is an, is an important thing that we should not be ashamed of and we should be proud of. Yeah. I am here with a pioneer of broadcasting, Bud Walters. How are you doing? I'm doing, a one, doing wonderfully. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations on your 2014 National Radio Award. That's amazing. Thank you very much. You know, truth is when anybody gets an award, what they're really doing is representing everybody else they've ever known oh, yeah. who deserves the award. So I'm glad to be the poster boy and, and, and certainly honored to get it, but it's, it's really because of everybody else I've worked with and just done through the years. How has it all changed, you know, throughout the years and all throughout your career? And then now, like I'm starting up with everything. Well, so. uh, you know, I started out as you did, but a long time ago mm -hmm. and worked on a college radio station mm -hmm. and decided that gee, this is what I want to do. You can make a difference in, you know, in the world and in your community. And uh, so that's what we've done all these years. But what's changing is just, as you know, the technology for yes, folks definitely. your age. Uh, we have so many wonderful opportunities of ways to communicate with each other. Yeah. And as a broadcaster, we're trying to do all of those things ourselves. You know, we not only do we offer, you know, streaming and you can listen to our radio stations over the air. You can listen to uh, them on the stream. You know, you can participate in our web. You can listen on mobile. Uh, but we're offering video. And, you know, we just have to expand. When you think of radio, it's not as I knew it, yes. but as you're going to know it. And then, you know, with this device, <laughs> yes. which is your lifeblood, uh, yeah. there is an app called Next Radio yes. that is a, is a download on some telephones, mm -hmm. uh, I think Sprint has about 20 phones, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile have really just right now the HTC One M8. Mm -hmm. But when you download that device or dev that app, it lets you listen to the radio over the air as opposed to on the stream. Mm -hmm. And if you're listening on the stream, of course, 
you're using your data plan, you're yeah. using a lot of battery, and at some point it might cost you a lot of money, but if you listen over the air on your your mobile device, mm-hmm. uh, it, uh, it, it doesn't use all those things. Exactly. It's, and, uh, I, and we also, you know, you have album art and mm-hmm. you know, interactivity. The, the album art and everything comes through the internet, but the listening comes over the air. Exactly. And so I suspect, you know, in the next uh, few years, everybody's going to hear about this. And your uh, mobile device is the radio in your pocket that, yeah. you know, folks your age never have had before. Mm-hmm. Uh, folks a little younger than me had Walkman and in my age, the group, they use transistor radios. Oh, yeah. But today, this is the transistor radio. And yeah. so be looking for the next radio app. Definitely. Yeah, the next radio is, you know, a big thing coming out. And I love how you said it's like a radio like, in your pocket. You know, that yeah. was really, really cool. Um, and I know a lot of kids, you know, especially my age, you know, we listen to the radio for, like, music, you know, that kind of thing. So to, like, have it on your phone, you know, maybe get some, like, talk radio in there. That's cool, well, too. Well, the thing that's easy about it is that, you can, uh, on your phone, it will show you all the local radio stations yeah. by format. So you can just go back and forth real easily. Mm-hmm. Or it will show them to you by their frequency. Or, and, of course, you can have your favorites. And then there's even a radio tuner yeah. that, oh uh, that just, just tune back and forth. So there's lots of ways to use it. And the public has not yet learned about this. Yeah, it's just true. coming out. Mm-hmm. But I turned in my iPhone for this. Yeah. And uh, this is a, a HTC One. It's a Droid, mm-hmm. and so I'm still learning the Droid. Yes. And I did love using my iPhone, mm-hmm. but it was worth it for me to turn in the iPhone. And I am here with an amazing person, Kay Olin. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's yeah. an exciting evening. It's when we celebrate the best of the best for radio. Yeah. So everybody's all geared up and waiting to see who's going to win this I know. evening. Yeah, it's definitely exciting. This is like a huge award in radio, right? Right. Yeah. Very big. It's yeah. it's like their Academy Awards. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's, oh, it's like huge. <laughs> so that's great. So you do a lot of like with mentoring women and everything. Can you tell me more about that? I um, am involved with two organizations, AWM, Alliance for Women in Media, and Mentoring and Inspiring Women. And we really believe in getting the executive and leadership level of the business to work with with, um, women and help elevate their management and leadership skills. So it's really great because we build a network for them and get the kind of leadership and um, mentoring skills built in for them that they you know, need to move forward and up in their careers. Yeah, definitely. I love that. I think that's great. I was talking actually with Erica Farber about, you know, all of that stuff, like, you know, and what advice would you give girls uh, wanting to get into media or radio specifically? Don't be shy. Yes, <laughs> it, You'd be surprised. Everyone's flattered when you ask them to introduce you to someone or to spend time with them. So you really need to start building a network, you know, and just ask and be brave and then build a personal and professional board of net, uh, um, directors, if you will. And um, just ask for mentoring, you know. Yeah. People that mentor get more out of it than you do. Yes. They love it that much. Yes. So. And I'm here with Malik, who is the director of radio services with NAB, right? Yep. National awesome. Association of Broadcasters. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's great. So I have seen you running around all over today. Tell me like what your day has been like. So what I do is I put together sessions for programmers, and they're always fun. They have to do with imaging and branding and, you know, how they find... <laughs> That did not sound good. I don't know if you guys heard that. Someone's (laughs) looking for a job right now. (laughs) Um, And finding new talent. So it's really great. And tonight we have the Marconi, the NAB Marconi Radio Awards, which are for overall excellence in broadcasting. It's kind of like the the Grammys for music and the Oscars for movies. Yeah, it's a big deal, guys. Big deal. So you were like completely in charge of the Marconis and everything. How is it, you know, setting it up and all that stuff? So... I don't actually do the show. What I do is um, I set up all of the judging and the entry system, so the way everybody enters, and I help them kind of get through that process. And um, it is, it's you know, it it means a lot to, especially to on-air personalities. It means a lot for them to be recognized. And um, yeah, it's a room of 650 people, but it goes out to over 6,000 radio stations yeah. that says, you are the best small market personality. You are the best large market personality. Yeah. And then this year, I'm really excited about, we added a new category for non-commercial stations. So that includes 
college radio stations. Yes, and I'm yes. so excited about yeah. that. Yeah, so we're, we're going to build that entry up because I think that's where everyone really starts. Yeah. But according to you, you start before college. <laughs> yes. I'm here with Howard, who is the voiceover for Jack FM. Tell me more about Jack FM. Jack FM. We play a lot of music. We play a lot of music for a lot of decades now. It just keeps adding and growing and growing. Uh, there's probably a few left from the 60s, but you know, a, a lot, a couple from the 70s, and then you know, a lot more from the 80s, and some from the 90s, and now we're into the 2000s, and the, well, the 2000 to 2010, and then that's a whole new decade too, yeah. right? We forget about that. Yeah. But yeah, we'll just keep going, and and and. Uh, it's a wide variety of music. Yeah. We say we play what we want. So, yeah. you know, whatever we want, we play it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, within a format that isn't going to make the audience angry and come and throw rocks at the radio station. Yes, that would never be good. Yeah. So how did you get into doing voiceovers? Um, I used to hate doing voiceovers. I was a disc jockey, yeah. a DJ on a station, a bunch of stations, and got fired from the mall and was slowly running out of options. And, yes, of course. <laughs> and. Uh, you know, when I was a DJ, I, I used to like figure out ways out of the building to not read the copy and the commercials. I go, oh, I hope the guy doesn't see me, man. I could be home and out with my buddies in about like 10 minutes, yeah. and they'd see me and flag me down mm -hmm. and make me foam at the mouth reading like carpet commercials, and I hated it. And I'm like, God, I never want to do this. And then all of a sudden, one day, um, I, you know, I started, I fell into this radio imaging because I think I was so bad at it and not employed anywhere. A friend of mine felt sorry for me and said, hey, we're doing this station. And I used to do these beer commercials on TV and read them like a guy who didn't care. And um, they kind of thought, hey, that's cool. We, we want a guy like who sounds like he kind of doesn't care, or just like a regular dude instead of like a big, huge voice and broadcasting from the top of the world, you know? Yeah, exactly. So it'd be like, hey, yeah, we're sort of self self-effacing. We don't take ourselves seriously. And yeah. I guess they thought I fit that mold. And uh, wow, here I am talking to you. I'm here with Paul Twinkle. How are you doing? Oh, you know, with a name like Tinkle, you can't hardly forget that one. And in a beautiful name like Pavlina, I like that. Thank you. Do people call you Pav, Pavy, Pavlina? Yeah, Pav, yeah, Arlena, people. Or do they just, uh, are I they? I Pav and Pavy a lot. Yeah. I like that. Well, that's pretty cool. So, uh, you know, name, everybody has to have kind of a hook. You know, some yeah. people have a stage name. True. Mine's the real thing. <laughs> Mine too, I feel yeah. you. I get yeah. that. Definitely. So, so you're with uh, Thunderbolt Broadcasting. Tell me about that. Well, we are a group of radio stations in West Tennessee, yeah. which is uh, in the left-hand side of the state. Mm -hmm. You know, we're about two hours north of Elvis. Nice. Oh, and, uh, well, I mean, you know, it makes it easy to find. Sure. And right along the Mississippi River. Yeah. So we've got, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some FM and some AM station, and we do a lot of the same things that most people do in small market radio, mm -hmm. and that's to tell people about lost dogs and yeah. help them sell their stuff on the radio and yeah. we announce funeral notices and then we play rock and roll and country and yeah. you know those kinds of things a little bit of everything that's great mm -hmm. so how did you really get into broadcasting well great question <laughs> uh back at about 1969 mm -hmm. this is my 45th year mm -hmm. i started as the janitor of the radio station oh my gosh. that i now own at a buck 65 an hour mm -hmm. and i worked my way up from being a janitor to a uh, weekend DJ, and then the next thing you know, I'm doing a lot of different things. And so, you know, I changed jobs a lot over the years after I got through the end of broadcasting with being a DJ and a newsman. Yeah. And I realized that the best security in radio is just to own the place, and that's yes. what I did. Definitely. I, yeah. can see, I can see that. So a lot of times, like, people will somehow end up in radio. How did you, like, did, did you just kind of end up in radio, or are you always interested in it? Well, I got into radio you ever heard of citizen band radios, CB radios, that's little two-way radios where I you can talk? I think I have, and, yeah. You know, it's kind of like with walkie-talkies and so oh, yeah, forth. Yeah. <laughs> well, CB radios is where I got my interest in broadcasting. And from that, it just kind of developed. But before that, or during that time, I was also, I milked cows for a living. <laughs> and, oh, my God, for like a living? How did you do that? Well, I, that's what I did to put myself through college. I was oh, wow. I was a dairy farmer. I milked milk twice a day, you know, yeah. and... You know, five bucks a day to milk cows. So that's really cool. Drove like, a tractor for a buck an hour, that yeah. kind of stuff. So I could never do that. I feel like, the, like I don't know. I like animals, but like I would have a hard time with cows. Oh, well, listen, cows are the best things really? in the world. Yeah, uh -huh. you know, there's always plenty of milk to go around. So <laughs> very true. and it was free. Yeah, so, very true. Anyway. It's always good. Yeah. Well, thank. Yeah. So, 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 what, what do you have that gives you this much passion to do what you're doing? You're yeah. just fantastic. Thank you. Well, you know, I have. When I think of the P, can you guys see that? Oh yeah. 
Pete, Pavlina, I think a passion. This lady's oh, got yeah. passion. Thank so, you. Yeah. And, well, and I you've have... got a personality. Yeah. And you've got uh, professionalism. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and obviously some perseverance mm -hmm. to go along with it. And you're kind of professional, too. I mean, you look good and all that kind of stuff. So, and you're persistent because you got me to come over here and be with you. So, and you take pride in what you're doing. Yeah, I love it. That was really cool. Well, I like just that. Yeah. Pray about everything you do and you'll be fine. <laughs> thank so, you. There yes. you go. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. Pavlina, can I get a hug?